Good evening. The Soviet ambassador to Japan says Russian search parties have found traces of an airliner crash off a Soviet island in the North Pacific. But Japan and the United States claim a Soviet fighter shot down the Korean Airlines jumbo jet with a missile. 269 people, including an Australian family, are believed to have perished. World tension has grown as Western leaders denounce the tragic incident as brutal, cowardly and barbaric. The United Nations Security Council is expected to meet tomorrow morning, Brisbane time, at the request of the United States and Japan. While Australia's Foreign Minister, Bill Hayden, says the incident will place a serious strain on our relations with Moscow. Despite the enormity of the tragedy, Korean airliners are still flying the Pacific routes from the United States to Korea. This jet left Los Angeles only hours after the shooting down to follow part of the same route as the ill-fated flight 007. The Boeing 747 with 240 passengers and 29 crew was flying between New York and the Korean capital Seoul. It had stopped for fuel at Anchorage in Alaska. First word something was amiss came when the jumbo disappeared off Japanese radar west of the Soviet island of Sakhalin, a strategically sensitive area well guarded by the Russians. The Korean pilot had given no inkling that anything was wrong. His last contact was a seemingly routine request for a higher altitude. After initially denying any knowledge of the missing plane, the Russians changed their story. They admitted an unidentified jetliner had entered their airspace. Their version of events is that it ignored warnings from Soviet jets and continued on toward the Sea of Japan. American intelligence confirms the plane did stray into the Russian domain. The Americans say as many as eight Soviet fighters tracked flight 007 for two and a half hours. Then came the crunch. A 1960s vintage Sukhoi jet was ordered to fire a missile at the unarmed jumbo. Meanwhile, at Seoul's airport, big crowds were waiting to meet the jumbo that never came. As its arrival was increasingly delayed in an air of uncertainty and mystery, relatives began to fear the worst. Grieving quickly spread. Their fears were later horribly realised. Most of the information about the events of early yesterday morning, Australian time, has come from the Americans. It's been based on transmissions between the pilots of the Soviet jets and ground control, allegedly monitored through the CIA installation at Pine Gap in the Northern Territory. The American Secretary of State, George Schultz, gave details of what the intelligence agency heard. A Soviet pilot reported visual contact with the aircraft at 1812 hours. The Soviet plane was, we know, in constant contact with its ground control. At 1821 hours, the Korean aircraft was reported by the Soviet pilot at 10,000 meters. At 1826 hours, the Soviet pilot reported that he fired a missile and the target was destroyed. At 1830 hours, the Korean aircraft was reported by radar at 5,000 meters. At 1838 hours, the Korean plane disappeared from the radar screens. Just what did happen?